the hope to many around the globe, transforming lives into legacies. Live in Word with Pastor Mensah Otabil. And now, today's word. But God wants us to grow in grace. He wants us to grow in his stature, in the stature of Christ. We respond to situations according to the level of our maturity. If you look into your own life and examine the way you've responded to things that have happened to you, um, if you look back, you'll realize that given the same opportunity, probably you act differently. Uh, if maybe you look back 20 years, 30 years ago, something that happened and the way you acted, um, now you've grown 20, 30 years, and you look back and you say, well, you know, I could have done better. Or if the same situation presented itself, I will not handle it the way I did back then. The reason is because as you grow, you mature in the way you respond to relationships. Things that happen that you were very impatient with, later on as you mature, you realize that you are able to ex exercise more patience and you are able to handle them better. Things that happen that really annoyed you, you realize later as you grow that you have the ability to handle them better. So growth helps us to manage difficult relationships in a better way. Much more when we grow spiritually. Because when we grow spiritually, our values change, our understanding change, and we are able to handle things better. And that's what we're going to look at today, how our growth helps us to manage difficult relationships as we grow in grace. Turn with me in your Bibles to Colossians chapter 4, and we will read verses 5 and 6. And just for your information, Colossians is in the New Testament. It's not in the Old. It's getting to the latter part of your Bible. Chapter 4 of Colossians, verses 5 and 6. And uh, let's hear the reading of God's word. Walk in wisdom toward those who are outside redeeming the time let your speech always be with grace seasoned with salt that you may know how you ought to answer each one deserve answers that are more considerate others deserve answers that are more specific Others deserve answers that are more bold. But you have to have the wisdom to know how to answer each one. And when we're dealing with difficult relationships, we are also dealing with how we respond, how we answer. Now, if you look at this passage, there are a few things I want to bring to your notice. The first thing is the Bible says, walk in wisdom walk in wisdom that simply means that live your life wisely uh, as yet i don't know any walk style that is called wisdom but walk in wisdom doesn't mean change your posture in walking but it simply means live your life wisely or act wisely don't act or react to pressure simply because of anger or frustration. We respond wisely. No matter how much you are provoked, you have to walk in wisdom. The second thing I want you to note in that verse is redeem the time. Walk in wisdom, redeem the time. Redeem the time means don't waste your time. Some relationships will cause you to waste your time. You waste your time fighting battles. You should have stopped fighting long ago. You waste time on people who just stretch you 
and stretch you and stretch you till you have lost your shape and your focus. Redeem the time. You don't respond to everything. If, if for example, you're driving in the streets of Accra and, and you're driving your car and, and maybe you made a mistake or somebody made a mistake, but as the other person in the other car just chests to you in from his car to indicate that uh, uh, there is something wrong with your thinking processes or, or, or that he, 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 he gives you an insult that renders serious doubts on the source of your birth. And all of these situations are, 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 are held against you. You don't get up or get down from your car and go and fight the person. First, it's the waste of time, it's a waste of effort, and it can be a waste of your face. So, redeem the time. The person gestures to you or speaks an annoying word to you, just block it out of your mind and move on. Because your life is more precious than the insult of a frustrated man who doesn't have good vocabulary. Maybe he, you don't know where he's coming from. Maybe his, his wife has annoyed him and he's so angry. So he took it on you. So leave him to fight his anger. But you also get up, take off your shirt and say, well, is it me? Is it me? So redeem the time. Don't waste your time on issues that are of no consequence to your destiny. Your life is more important than reacting to immediate words of anger and frustration. And believe you me, in this world you meet people who really, really drive you crazy. They do with their words, with their attitude, but redeem the time. Is it worth it? The third thing you would notice in this passage is that you speak with grace. Number one, walk with wisdom. Number two, redeem the time. Number three, speak graciously. A soft answer will turn away wrath. Everywhere in life, whether it's relating to your brother or your sister, when you're a parent and you see your children fighting, sometimes, you know, the things they fight about uh, as a parent, you really wonder, you know, because this, well, he said this and he did that and, and he made a face at me. You know, re, re, not too long ago, our last daughter, you know, because she's, she's the last born, all the others, you know, tease her and make fun of her and pick on her. And, and so she came to the, to the room very, very angry, you know, and, and uh, so and so, uh, her brother had, had, had done something, and she was angry and, and, and angry, and so I said, what did he do? Then she kept quiet. You know, sometimes people do things against you, you get angry, but when you are asked, you can't say, because the thing is stupid. So we said, what did she do? She kept quiet. Finally, what did she do? She put her palm somewhere around her eye, and, and so... I turned to my wife and I said, what does that mean? Does he have an eye problem? Now, apparently, among their age group, when somebody makes that gesture to you, it means that you have been disgraced. So she put her palm around her eye and said, he did that. So I also did it and I said, okay. And all of a sudden, we all started laughing. But it shows how we get angry about ridiculous things ridiculous things and then we respond with anger and sometimes we hurt ourselves very bad I have been in traffic sometimes and seen people get out to go and fight and come back with their dress their shirts torn their shoes in a gutter somewhere their hair disheveled disheveled and their lips bloodied and heaving big breath <sighs> sit in their car and drive off now if you knew you were going to drive off why did you include this interlude you could have driven off this interlude has not helped your driving 
It has not improved your life. It has wasted your time, wasted your face, wasted your clothes. But you felt you needed to respond. My friend, you don't need to respond to everything. You don't need to. Sometimes when you leave things, they die by themselves. Let your speech be seasoned with salt. If you are going to respond, measure your response in the way you speak. Then go to 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 17 and 18. 2 Peter chapter 3. 2 Peter is way down from Colossians, so go further. 2 Peter chapter 3. Verses 17 and 18. Are you there? Okay. And it reads, You therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand, beware lest you also fall from your own steadfastness, being led away with the error of the wicked. Verse 18. But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to him be the glory both now and and forever amen now i want you to note verse something verse 17 before we go to 18 the last part of verse 17 it says it talks about steadfastness being steadfast lest you will be led away with the error of the wicked in other words if you are not firm somebody's mistake can lead you into a mistake the error of the wicked can lead you away and cause you to also get into error. How many times have we made mistakes because somebody else made a mistake first and we joined them in the mistake? Somebody insulted you first and you insulted him second. Somebody misbehaved first and you misbehaved second. What has happened? He has led you in the error of his ways. And many times in life, when people act in a way, we respond in the same way they act and end up doing the same things they are doing. It's like a married couple. The husband is, is cheating on the marriage. Maybe he's, he's committing adultery. And the wife says, well, if you're doing it, I'm also going to do it. What a man can do, a woman can do better. No, it's bad for your husband to commit adultery but don't be led astray into his error you have your own life to live you have your own choices you don't respond to people's error you must be steadfast I must be steadfast and I know sometimes really people get on your nerves and, and sometimes you really feel let, let me show them my true colors <laughs> you know uh, we, we had a, a pastor in some years ago who, 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 who was angry in the church in the congregation and I think people were criticizing him in the church or something like that you know, which happens all the time you know, if I go to a, if I, I was a, a fly and I, I came to your rooms I, I think I'll stop pastoring this church thank God I don't hear everything you say uh, but this pastor heard what the people were saying and, and, and he got angry. And, and so he was preaching. And, and you know, he, he, he moved away from the preaching. And started, you know, fighting back. Because this is his time. You know, you have your time. I have my time. For the next 30 minutes, you are listening to me and you are not leaving. So he decided to really give it to them. And somewhere in the process of giving it to them, he says, If you are not careful, I will show you my true colors. So the question is, so all along, where have your true colors been? Now, if the pastor says, I have true colors I'm not showing, it simply means that he's living a hypocritical life. And sometimes many of us get angry. We want to show people our true colors. Do you know who I am? Go and ask. <laughs> I've heard people say, go and ask. When I was in school, I was dangerous. Go and ask. I thought you had matured beyond school. I thought you were now an improved version of your secondary school or university type. But how come when you are now provoked, 
you want to refer to the bad past and not the good present how come you are impressed by the negativity of your character and not the positivity of who you are today in Christ Jesus Peter warns us be steadfast lest you be led in the error of the wicked people can make you do bad things they can and they can lead you and sometimes you can be a great Christian with a great testimony you go to church everybody loves you and 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 you 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 you, you function in the church and everybody respects you and all of a sudden you start doing things that are totally at variance to your Christian faith and it's probably because somebody is leading you in their error they are annoying you to sin verse 18 says instead of being led in the error of the wicked what must we do what must we do grow in grace not grow in anger not grow in badness grow in grace the grace is talking about there is God's grace God's favor God's ways God's character God is gracious God's comportment the way God responds grow in grace when we grow in grace we grow in character and character remains the same in spite of changes around it as a matter of fact in the Greek language the word that is translated character can also be translated to mean a statue Sta statue or character is like a statue a statue is permanent is that not so we have quite a few statues in Ghana here we have the one at the independent square of the uh, unknown soldier I think it's supposed to be uh, sergeant Ajete but it's it's a memorial the senator for the unknown soldier uh, and which one a few have been toppled uh, we used to have them uh, and we, we have a few of mothers holding children and you know the presidents are not careful they don't put up statues because they know they, they, they'll be toppled and uh, they, their heads will be knocked off from the statue so uh, uh, they have become smarter Saddam Hussein got one up and uh, people use their sandals to beat his face uh, so <laughs> but when, when you have a statue the statue is permanent if you go to that Kwame Nkrumah memorial you have Kwame Nkrumah's statue and he has only one posture. He's pointing forward. Morning, noon, night. Pointing forward. Raining, pointing forward. Wind is blowing, pointing forward. If you go and insult him, hey Kwame, Kwame, you are X, Y, Z. He's still pointing forward. Excuse me to say, if the birds of the air decided to unload their garbage on him, he's still pointing. In other words, character does not change no matter the circumstances surrounding it character remains permanent there is something about you which must be permanent and doesn't respond to stimulus outside it and that is the character of God grow in grace grow in that permanence of character there must be something about you that doesn't change anybody can come and play any games around you but you still remain the same character and the Bible says we must grow in that permanence in that character of God it's called grace who God is and how he comports himself we grow in that and the more you grow in the grace of God the more predictable you are in your character because temptations will not stop on the earth I hope you know that by now the world is getting worse in terms of the boldness of people to sin is getting worse and it's going to get worse the Bible predicts it social sciences affirm it we are not becoming a better people we are becoming more depraved because we are removing all the hindrances 
And we're acting out everything we imagine as it was in the days of old, in the days of Noah. The Bible says, and the people imagined whatever they imagined they did. That's where we are. That's what brought the end of the world then. And I guess it's going to end up in the same way in our time also. So there will be pressure. Women are getting more bolder in their dressing. <laughs> if, if you don't have good eyes, you have to just either wear thick sunshades <laughs> so you don't see anything. Or, or you look into the skies while you are walking. <laughs> because <laughs> the things your eyes will see, your mouth can't talk. <laughs> People are getting bolder. And, and so you're going to find, I wouldn't be surprised 20 years from now that people are going to walk naked in the streets. I wouldn't be surprised, it wouldn't surprise me at all. So here you are, brother in Christ, you're holding your Bible in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> and the woman doesn't care about your Bible in the name of Jesus. I bind Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> What are you going to do? You cannot change them. You cannot tell them to go and change their clothes because they are not changing your clothes. But you must have character. So they change, but you remain the same. We can't change the world, but we must be firm in Christ. Young people, temptations are going to get wild. The men are getting bolder. It used to be the men will go for unmarried women. Now they don't care. Their best friend's wife, their children's wives, their children's girlfriend. Your son introduces his girlfriend to the father. Instead of the father going to present drinks to collect a bride for the son, he wants to get it for himself. The world is not getting better. In this world, we live as Christians. And what do we do? Grow in grace. You grow in character. So that when people change around you, you remain firm. Otherwise, you'll be a Christian in the auditorium of the church and an unbeliever outside the church. You see where the temptations are too severe. You know, I, I get all kinds of complaints. People say, Pastor, you have to preach against the way people dress. Preach, preach hard. <laughs> I'm telling you, human beings don't respond much to preaching. You preach hard, they'll still do it. Because there's something in their minds that is depraved. We can control it a bit in the church, but how long do you live in the church? Two hours. Afterwards, you have 22 hours. Out there. They are waiting for you outside Chichinga Avenue. <laughs> so if, if you don't grow in grace, my friend, it won't help much in church because the, you encounter the world more than you encounter the church. So instead of looking for people to change, we must grow. 